If you enjoy content like this, please subscribe to the Lucid Programming channel for more programming tutorials. Okay, so in this video, we'll be making use of the Tweepy API. And this is an API that we can access via Python, which will allow us to very easily stream tweets in real time directly from Twitter. So in order to follow this series of tutorials, what we're going to be doing is installing Tweepy, which is a Python package. So I'm going to assume that you have Python installed on your machine. And if so, all we'll need is the Tweepy module. We're just going to create a Python, sorry, uh, well, we are going to create some Python. We're going to first create a Twitter application. And in order to do that, you will also require a Twitter account. So if you don't have a Twitter account, go ahead and create one. It's pretty easy to do. Um, doesn't need to be a main Twitter account or anything like that. You just need to sign up for Twitter in whatever way you wish to do so. Um, once you do that, you will have the ability to create a Twitter application. And then we'll write Python code that will interface with that application to stream tweets in real time based on keywords or hashtags. Now, what we'll do in this video is we'll just write a very simple application to accomplish just that. So we'll see tweets given a set of keywords. Uh, and then in later subsequent videos, we'll see what we can do to analyze the content of the tweets that we get back. Maybe we can produce some nice graphs based on that data, um, and then some other fun things that we can do with that data, like uh, possibly sentiment analysis, which will most likely be uh, part of the natural language processing series of videos. So keep an eye out for that as well. So uh, I guess one thing that I want to mention as well is that all of the code as usual for all of these things will be provided on the GitHub page and all of the links that I'm talking about here, all of the links that I have open on this browser are going to be available below in the description. So no need to write them down, uh, but just refer to that and you can see the code that we use in this in all videos. Uh, another thing I want to mention too is that if you have any problems or questions about Tweepy, which is the primary module that we will be using in this tutorial series, uh, the documentation is docs.tweepy.org. Again, link will be in the description and more further information about this module is there and it's very uh, descriptive and well written. So I will refer you to that. So before we get into writing any Python code, as I mentioned, we need to actually go ahead and create a Twitter application. So in order to do that, what we need to do is navigate over to apps.twitter.com. Again, this will require that you do have a Twitter account and are logged in. If so, you should be presented with a dashboard that looks probably similar to this, depending on what time uh, when you're watching this video. Uh, you can see that I already have an application here listed under my Twitter apps that was used for something else I was working on just for fun. Uh, and then what, we're, what you're going to want to do, you might not see anything here. Um, if you don't have any apps in this application management section, you can click on this create new app button. That will take you to a form which just asks for some really simple details about what this Twitter application is going to be doing. So I've already kind of did a dry run of this and I have some information for what we'll be filling in. So you can put in whatever name you like. I'm going to put in this name. This is just the name of the Twitter application, Lucid Programming Twitter app, uh, a description which is also required. So I'm just going to say a test Twitter application for a YouTube tutorial and then a website. So I'm just going to put in my own homepage here just for good measure, I suppose. Callback URL, this is not uh, particularly necessary, so we'll just leave this blank. Make sure you click this developer agreement and then you can click on create your Twitter application. So if you do so, then you are presented hopefully with this page that says your application has been created and uh, all of the relevant information for your application will be stored here in terms of how to access, um, I guess, credentials and things like that. So what, we're, we're, what you're going to want to do is actually click on the settings tab right here. Uh, so if you do so, you will see a, uh, you'll see four things listed, consumer key, consumer secret, access token, and access secret. I'm not going to click on that because the, um, I guess the keys are unique to each program. And I guess showing those things is, I, I think it's against, well, it might be in poor taste. I don't exactly know if it, there's any like security breach if I show those things, but I guess just for good measure, I'm just going to uh, let you click on that yourself, look at what those are, keep them secret, and then we're going to use those to interface with our application. I guess for one thing, if you do have a Twitter application that's interfacing with Twitter, you wouldn't want somebody to get access to your tokens because then they could manipulate it and they could 
you know, possibly abuse it. And, um, you know, that would look good for your Twitter account. So try not to let that happen. So we're going to use those uh, four credentials to authenticate the Python program that we will now be writing. So with that said, minimize this and let's get to writing some code. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to create a credentials file, which is going to store those four things, which you should see on your settings tab. So I'm going to create this as Twitter credentials.py. So what we're going to do here is we're just going to create some variables which will be accessed in our primary program. So I'll just put in a comment, variables that contain the user credentials to access Twitter API. Uh, so the first one is access token. The next is access token secret. Uh, there's also the consumer, oh, let me spell it properly, the consumer key and the consumer secret. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, whoops, I'm going to define each of these as just Python strings. So I'm just going to assume that you can go over to the settings tab, back to here, click on the settings tab, and then copy and paste in between these quotes, the access token, access token secret, consumer key, and consumer secret. Save this file and make sure that this file is saved in the same directory that you'll be uh, using all of your, uh, that you'll be writing all of your Twitter API access Python code in. So I'm just going to save this right now. And that's that. So if I look here, I have Twitter credentials.py in this directory. In the same directory, I'm going to create another Python file, which will be the brains of what we'll be doing, which, as I mentioned before, will just be, in this video at least, streaming the tweets directly from Twitter in real time. So let's create a file, which we'll call tweepystreamer.py. So before we get into writing this, one thing that I probably should have mentioned earlier than I did is that, oops, that was not supposed to go there. Let's see, let's try that again. Uh, there we go. You need the Tweepy module, of course. So as I mentioned, I'm going to assume that you have Python installed. I won't assume that you have Tweepy installed. So if you don't have it installed, what you'll need to do is access it through pip, pip install Tweepy. If you run this command in your terminal, uh, it will go ahead and install. For me, I already have it installed, so it says requirement already satisfied. So, sorry about that, I forgot to mention that earlier. So back to the code, so back to here. Let's go ahead and start importing some of the things that we'll be making use of uh, that are coming from the Tweepy library. So the first thing that we'll import is tweepy.streaming, import stream listener. This is a, um, a class that's from the Tweepy module that will allow us to listen to the tweets, uh, kind of the fire hose of tweets as they as they come based on certain keywords or hashtags. We'll also need to import another thing for authentication. So we'll say from Tweepy imports OAuth handler. This class is going to be responsible for authenticating based on the credentials that we stored in the other file for uh, associated with the Twitter app. And then we're going to uh, have one more thing from Tweepy import stream. And I guess another import that we require not from Tweepy is the credentials file that we created. So import Twitter credentials. And again, this should be located in the same folder as this file that we're writing to currently. So the first thing that I wanna do is I just want to create a class which will allow us to print the tweets. So a very simple thing, and then we'll go back over it and kind of make it a little bit more robust and we'll refine what it's doing, but simple first. So let's create a class and we'll call this standard out listener. And this class is going to actually inherit from stream listener. So it's going to inherit from the stream listener class and the stream listener class provides methods that we can directly override. So one of the methods is called on underscore data. It's a class method that takes in a parameter data. And there's another one that we can also override called on error, which also is a class method and takes uh, a status variable. So what do these functions do? What are they responsible for? On data is an overridden method which will take in the data that is streamed in from the stream listener, so the one that is listening for tweets. 
and then it's going to print, we can do whatever we want with that data, that tweet. So what we're gonna do, just to make it very simple, is we're going to print out the data that we get. And then we're just going to return true to make sure that everything uh, went well. We will go back and make that a bit more robust because that's very simplistic at the moment. On error, this is what uh, a method that we are overriding from the stream listener class that happens if there's an error that occurs. And one thing we can do, again, which is just very simple, is we can just print out the error, which is uh, passed in through this status variable. We're just printing it on, on screen. So if we encounter an error, what will happen is this method will be triggered and we'll print the status message of that error to the screen. So the next thing that we're going to want to do is just actually create a method, sorry, an object from this standard out listener class that we just created and then actually get on to streaming the tweets. So this will be in the main part of the program. So we'll say if name is equal to main. And what we'll first do is create a listener object. So I'm going to say listener is equal to standard out listener like that. So again, this is just an object of the class that we just created, which is inheriting from the stream listener class. And then what we're going to do is we're going to want to authenticate. So we're going to want to authenticate using the credentials that we had uh, stored in the other file. So we're going to create this variable called auth, and we're going to say oauth handler, which is the class that we're importing from Tweepy, which is going to be responsible for actually authenticating our code. And we're going to pass it in the credentials. So we're going to say Twitter credentials dot consumer key and Twitter credentials dot consumer secret. So this, um, in order for us to define this auth uh, object of the auth handler class, it takes these two uh, arguments that we need to pass in. And then in order for us to complete the authentication processes, we're going to say auth.set access token. And this is a method which is provided from the OAuth handler class. And what this takes, this method also takes two arguments and that takes the access token and the access token secret. At this point, our application hopefully should be properly authenticated. So we'll create a Twitter stream based on the, so we'll, we'll call this, uh, we'll create a variable called stream equal to this thing, which is the class stream that we imported above. And we're going to pass it two things, the authentication token to verify that we've actually authenticated properly, and then the listener object that we created. And the listener object is just responsible for how do I deal with the data, the tweets, and how do I deal with the error if I encounter an error. Uh, one final thing that we can do is we can filter the tweets, because otherwise if we just run this stream, <clears throat> if we run this listener, it's just going to stream a ton of tweets at us, which might be, some of them might be interesting, some of them might not be. Let's say we want to stream tweets that are focused on some keywords or hashtags or something like that. So what we can do is we can say stream.filter. This is a method that is also provided by the stream class. And th what this takes is a list. One of the things it can take is an optional parameter of a list, which is called track. And in this track list, we can provide it a list of things which if the Twitter, sorry, if the tweet contains any of these list objects, then it will apply it and it will say, I'll add this to the stream. So let's see, let's just add um, Donald Trump, uh, let's Hillary Clinton and uh, Barack Obama and let's say Bernie Sanders. So just some politicians in there. So we'll filter tweets based on this list of keywords. So we can go ahead and write, write this to a file and then we can go ahead and try to see what happens when we run it. So Python Tweepy Streamer. Now if we run this, we get, let's see, a 401. Let's check why that happens to be. And I think the reason for that was because I didn't fill in any of the <laughs> consumer key, consumer secret or anything like that. I had just written it from what you saw before. All of those things were completely blank, so don't be me, don't be an idiot. Go ahead and make sure you fill that stuff in. And once you do, if you do that, hopefully that should run and things should start coming on the screen there. So like we see a ton of uh, look seemingly garbage just showing up on the screen here. These are tweets. Uh, specifically, these are, let me just kind of stop this here. So if you don't stop it, it'll just keep, uh, <laughs> it'll just keep streaming. So this whole blob here, this is one tweet. Uh, it's not 
the person didn't tweet this thing out, of course. What this is, is it's a JSON formatted uh, dictionary object. And each of the fields in this braced thing here contains information about the tweet. So this says the tweet was created uh, today. This is today. Uh, this is the you know ID that Twitter associates with this particular tweet. Uh, apparently it was a, a retweet by this person here. Um, here is the actual text. So Donald Trump, that's one of the keywords that we had in the uh, in the list check. Um, so uh, 2019 State of the Union speech is January 30th. Um, so TV rating. So yeah, there's just some some stuff that he's saying there. What what other content do we have on this uh, thing that's interesting? Let's see. So it, it tells you also about um, like who retweeted it, how many times it's been retweeted. Um, th there's a whole ton of information in this little thing here. Uh, I think even the the platform uh, coordinates possibly of where this was tweeted from. In some cases, sometimes that's not uh, provided. But there's a ton of information in this thing. So there's one tweet here, and what we're going to be doing in subsequent videos is actually going through each of these and seeing if we can extract anything uh, interesting, any insights from these things, and just kind of have some fun with it. So back to the code. So what we have at this point is just something that prints out tweets to the screen, which is totally fine that it's proof of concept. We've got tweets coming in. Um, but I'm just going to clean some of this up to make this a bit more robust so that in subsequent videos, um, things are just kind of a little bit more well, robust, I guess is the right word. So let's go and create another class, which we'll call, let's call this Twitter uh, streamer. So this is going to be a class that we'll define for ourselves, which will be responsible for actually streaming the tweets. Just makes it a little bit more concise. So we'll call this stream tweets. And this is a class method, so it takes the object of self. Uh, I'm kind of thinking ahead here and assuming that instead of just printing tweets to the terminal like we saw there, perhaps I want to save tweets to a text file or a JSON uh, file so that way I can process them for whatever purpose I see fit later. So I'm going to allow the ability for us to pass in uh, a name, which will be the file name of the uh, tweets that we'll pass in. So let's say fetched tweets file name, I'll call that. So again, that's just the file name of where we want to, let's say, write our tweets to instead of showing them on the terminal. We can do both, but we don't have to. And then I'll also have a uh, hashtag list here. So this will just be the list uh, of keywords or hashtags that we wish to filter the tweets out by. So we're really just kind of reworking some of the code that we have that's the proof of concept uh, into something that's a little bit more modular. So let's go ahead and add a comment just to make this look a little nicer. This uh, handles Twitter authentication and the connection to the Twitter streaming API. So we're going to pretty much just take this code that we wrote down here. And I think we're just going to, well, let's just copy that, even remove it, move that over here. Let's go ahead and indent that. Uh, so we'll create the listener object. That's all good. Authenticate, do that. Uh, so instead of hard coding this here, I guess what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this and I'm going to put in the hashtag list that we passed into the function. So a bit more modular. So we can just create a Twitter streamer object instead of uh, doing that whole business that we had before in the main part of the code. Uh, another thing that I guess I want to do in this standard out listener class that we defined is, well, let's see, let's just, um, let me just add a few more comments here. So I want to add a comment for this class. This class is a class for streaming and let's say processing live tweets. That looks good. And then here, let's do another one. Uh, this is really, this is a basic uh, listener class that just prints, at this moment anyway, that just prints received tweets to standard out. So that might change over time as we make this more complicated. So I guess uh, the first thing that we'll do is we'll create a constructor for this thing because what I want to do is I want to create a standard out listener class or object rather and that may be associated with a file name that these are going to be uh, writing to. So where do we want to store the tweets? So I'm going to say fetched tweets file name. 
and this is a class variable, so I'm going to say self.fetchTweets file name is equal to fetched tweets file name. Uh, so this on data method is a little bit, it could use a little bit of um, uh, something to make it a little bit better at dealing with possible errors. So I'm going to have a try accept statement here. So I'm going to say try, let's say print data. Um, and then actually, I'm not going to put anything. Well, okay. Let, let's say let's say that we also want to write this stuff to a file too, right? So we've already created this file name that we've defined the uh, constructor of this class. Let's say with open self dot fetched tweets file name, and we'll append because we keep want we want to continually add the tweets as we stream them from the API. As tf, uh, we'll write the data. So tf.write data. So if you don't want to print it out and also write it, you can get rid of that print statement, but it's totally up to you. Uh, if that went okay, we'll return true. And then we'll have an accept case here. So accept, we'll say base exception. And then if that exception is hit, we'll say print uh, error on, on data, just to make sure that we know the method that we are in and then let's go ahead and print out uh, let's print out the actual error message so we'll print out the string of e uh, and then we'll return true okay so i think that's okay the error on error message i think is all right for now and then okay so now we have to change a little bit here in this uh, main function so let's go ahead and use our new class to uh, do pretty much what we did before but just make it a little bit more nice and modular so what we'll do is we'll create a hashtag list here uh, we'll i guess create it as let's say donald trump hillary clinton uh, Barack Obama and Bernie Sanders and let's see so we can also say let's define our fetch tweets file name as uh, let's just call it tweets.json so again as we saw from the output of the, of the terminal those tweets the braced objects are they can be formatted as JSON. It's a little bit easier for us to deal with that format if we want to read it in later. Uh, you can put .txt there; it's totally fine. But I'm just changing the extension to JSON. It's not necessary if you don't want to do that. Okay, so now let's define a Twitter streamer object. So I'll say Twitter streamer is equal to Twitter streamer, and then we'll say Twitter streamer. Uh, there it is, dot stream tweets, which is the method that we created up above. And we'll send it, takes two things, the file name that we want to write to, and then also the list of, of keywords that we're looking for. So that just made that a little bit more concise and everything a little bit more modular. And that will kind of get us started on this whole um, streaming tweets thing. we're going to be touching up some of the code that we wrote in part one. So we'll be touching up some code and we'll be focusing on the notion of pagination and also the cursor object in Twitter in specifically the Tweepy uh, library. So we'll be making use of that to do things like accessing our own tweets on our timeline, accessing user tweets from a, a specific user uh, that we might want to analyze tweets from, uh, also getting followers or friends from certain users and other things like that. So we'll be making use of the cursor uh, class in Tweepy to do that. So the first item on the board is to clean up a few things that we did in part one, just to make things a little bit more uh, streamlined and modular. Before we do that, I do want to import two things here at the top, which we'll be making use of in this video. One of them is called API. So from Tweepy import API. The other is called cursor. So from Tweepy import cursor. So once we have those, we're ready to make some changes. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to, um, I think, change the name of this Twitter stream listener class. So before, um, I guess the initial idea of this class was just to print out the tweet, but this class is doing a little bit more than that. It's also writing it to a file. Standard out listener is probably not the best name for this class since it can do a little bit more than just print it out to the screen. Let's call that something a little bit more general, let's just call it Twitter listener, uh, which would mean we'll also have to change the reference to that class over here when we make an object called listener.
So the next thing that I want to do is I thought that uh, authenticating here in this stream tweets function is fine, but I thought I would abstract this functionality into its own class so that way we can authenticate for other purposes that we may have. Indeed, we'll have those other purposes in this video. So I'm going to create another class up here, which will be for authentication. So I'm going to call this, let's say, Twitter authenticator, and we'll call the class Twitter authenticator. And what we'll do in this class is I'm just at this moment going to have a function which will do precisely what these two lines do. I just want to extract, uh, extrapolate that into this class. So what we're going to do is we're going to define a function called authenticate Twitter app. Uh, it's class method, so it'll take self as a parameter. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to essentially lift these two things here and then move them into this function over here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to return the auth object that I create in this uh, in this function. So the plan is in this Twitter streamer class, before we had this actual these two lines creating the authentication, what we're going to do now is we're just going to create instantiate an object of the authenticator class here in the constructor, and then use that object right where we had the previous code. So let me actually just write that out because maybe that's a little bit more clear. Uh, so we'll say self dot Twitter authenticator. This will be the class object of the authenticator class. And then what we'll do here is we'll just say uh, auth is equal to self dot Twitter authenticator dot authenticate Twitter app. And that will go ahead and do the same thing that those two lines did, but we've just kind of lifted that functionality into a class of its own to make it a bit more modular. So I think uh, that's one of the changes I wanted to make. Let's just go ahead and write this and go ahead and run it to make sure that we didn't break anything. So it looks like that's streaming tweets just as it was before. Seems like that worked out okay. The next thing I want to mention that I didn't before that I thought would be worthwhile to point out is this on error method. Now I did touch on this in part one of the video and I did say that if you encounter an error while you're streaming tweets, this method will be triggered. And in this case, what we're doing here is we're printing the status message of the error. But we might want to do a little bit more checking here, namely Twitter, the Tweet API imposes these things, um, well specifically the Twitter API imposes these things called rate limits. And essentially if you're uh, throttling the Twitter API trying to get all this information and Twitter doesn't like that, it might try to stop you from um, abusing the system, let's say. So basically, if Twitter thinks that you're doing that, it's going to give you an error message, which is going to be a 420, 420 message. And that's going to be like, hey, uh, if you keep doing this, then we'll essentially kick you. Uh, you, you. Basically, the first time you get this message, there's a window of time where you have to wait to access the tweets again. And if you keep accessing tweets and you ignore those messages, that window of time increases exponentially. So you could lock yourself out of accessing this information. So it's worthwhile to check that the status message, the error code that you're receiving is, is, of, is not of this form. So what we wanna do is we wanna say if status is equal to this error code, which is in this case for 20, we wanna just return false outright, that's it. We just wanna kill the connection so that way we don't um, you know, accidentally boot ourselves from accessing information on Twitter. And I'll just put in a comment here just so uh, if you're looking at this later and you forget what this is for, returning false on uh, data method in case, uh, basically in case rates limit is, um, occurs, let's say. Okay, so that is, I think, all of the changes. Let me just get rid of that extra space there. And that is that. Okay, great. Now we can start into actually making use of the cursor module that we imported there, the cursor class, and also um, essentially figure out how to use that to extract timeline tweets on your own timeline or friend's timeline or things of that nature. So to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to create another class and we'll call this, let's call this class Twitter client. So it'll be class Twitter client. And what we'll do here is we will make use, well, I guess let's first create a constructor object, uh, create constructor method. And so it's just gonna take self at the moment. And what we'll do is we will create an authenticator uh, object. So this is 
why we created the authenticator class. So we'll say self.auth is equal to Twitter authenticator uh, authenticate Twitter app. So this is just going to be the auth object so that way we can properly authenticate to communicate with the Twitter API. Uh, and then what we're going to do is we're going to define another class variable, which we'll call Twitter client. And this is going to be equal to API, which as you'll notice is one of the two things that we imported from Tweepy in this video. And then we'll pass it in the authentication credentials so that way that is authenticated. So we're going to make use of that in the uh, following functions that we'll write in this class. And actually what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to comment these things out and then we're going to uh, instantiate an object of the Twitter client class and see what we can do with this. So, okay, so let's start off with a function that will allow us to get uh, tweets. So we're going to call this function, I guess, get tweets. And we're going to pass in the parameter self since this is a class method. And then we're also going to pass in another uh, argument here, which is called num tweets. And this will allow us to determine how many tweets we want to actually show or how many tweets we actually want to extract. So we're going to first do this. We're going to define a list, which is called, let's say, oh, we'll say tweets. Tweets is equal to an empty list. What we're going to do is loop through a certain number of tweets and then for each one we do we're going to store that in the list and return that list to the user. So we'll say for tweet in cursor uh, self.twitterclient.user timeline. So I'll explain these things as I go. Uh, dot items num tweets. Let's actually break this down what I just wrote here. So we import a cursor. This is a class that will allow us to um, essentially do what we're about to do, which is get the user timeline tweets. So I should actually call this, let's say, uh, get user timeline tweets. Uh, and yeah, let's keep it like that. So basically what I'm doing is I'm saying, okay, the client object that we created here in the in the constructor, uh, there's, a, there's a method for every uh, object derived from this API class that has this user timeline functionality and that allows you specifying a user to get the tweets off that user's timeline. So we haven't specified a user. And in that case, if you don't specify a user, it just defaults to you. So if that argument is none, which it is by default, then it will just get your own timeline tweets. And then there's a parameter uh, for the cursor object called dot items, and that will tell this thing how many tweets to actually get from the timeline. So we can specify that as an argument sent in this uh, function here. So what we'll do in this loop, we're looping through every tweet that this cursor object provides to us. And what we can do is we can say tweet dot append. Uh, uh, yeah, tweets, sorry, tweets.append. Tweets is the list that we're storing these things in. Dot append tweet. And then we can just return the tweets list. Uh, and that can be, that will now consist of a list of all of the user timeline tweets. So let's go ahead and instantiate a client object and see if that works for our own timeline. So going down to the bottom here, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create uh, first, like I mentioned, a Twitter client object. So Twitter client is equal to Twitter client like that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to print the function that we just created. So Twitter client dot get uh, user timeline tweets. And that takes an argument. That argument is the number of tweets to get. Uh, in this case, I'll say, let's say five. So let's make sure that works. Let's save that and run it. So we'll see what tweets are on my timeline. So it's got quite a few. Uh, so remember, these tweets come in these big blobs. So actually, to make this a little bit more readable, I'm going to replace that number with just one. So I just want to first clear my screen to make it a little bit easier to read and then actually go and run this again. This will only get one tweet. Uh, this whole thing is one tweet. Uh, and basically this is, if I go to, let's see if I can find uh, some information about this tweet that will distinguish it, and then we'll go to my Twitter profile to verify this actually got the correct uh, tweet. So I see something about samharris.org. Uh, let's see, is there anything else here? Um, well, let's actually go to my Twitter. Yeah, so it looks like a lot on Sam Harris. So, okay, yeah, let's verify that this is actually the most recent tweet on my timeline it has something to do with Sam Harris. So I have my Twitter page up here. This is just my personal Twitter page. Feel free to follow me if you like. Uh, 
<laughs> no obligation. Uh, anyway, yeah, so there there we see this is the most recent tweet uh, that I retweeted from Sam Harris, and it's of the late, great Christopher Hitchens, who, if you're not a fan of, uh, shame on you. Uh, he's a really interesting guy, and I encourage you to read about him if you don't know who he is. So uh, this isn't a political channel, but uh, he's, he's amazing. Anyway, so that's that. So, yeah, so we've successfully obtained the... Um, the most recent tweet on my timeline. Great. Now, what if we want to do that for a specific user? So if we want to do this for someone other than myself, how do we do that? Well, we can modify our function a little bit to uh, allow us to specify that information. So let's go ahead and do that. So what we're going to do is we're going to create another variable here, which we'll call self.twitter user is equal to Twitter user. We haven't defined Twitter user yet. We're going to pass that in here as an argument. So basically what we'll do is we'll instantiate an object, a Twitter client object. And what we want to do is we want to uh, allow the, the person who is using this code to specify a user that they can get the timeline tweets from. And actually, what we're going to want to do is we're going to put in a default argument of none. So if you haven't seen this type of syntax before, if you have, uh, you know, like a, a function like this with an argument that has equal none or equal anything, this is a default argument. And if nothing is specified here for Twitter user, it just defaults to none. Uh, and remember, in our case, none, if you don't specify a Twitter user, it will just go to your own timeline. So, um, we want to specify a user, so we will be doing that. So the way that we tell the Tweepy API that we've specified a user is in this cursor function here, uh, this method. We'll say ID is equal to self.twitter user. So that will uh, do that. So now that will actually get the user timeline tweets for whatever user we specify. So let's go ahead and give that a run to verify that actually worked. So the way that we're going to do that, remember, is instantiate the Twitter client object based on uh, who we want to get the timeline tweets from. So in this case, I'm going to specify based on a user PyCon. What is PyCon? How do I know it's PyCon? Let's go back here. So PyCon, if you're not aware, is a conference that fo focuses on the Python programming language. And um, if, if you're not familiar with it, you should check it out. Again, also on YouTube, all the talks are available there. Uh, lots of really interesting talks and topics. I highly suggest you check it out. Um, so anyway, this is the user. This is the tweets that we want to obtain the timeline uh, or, or the home tweets from. And the way that I got PyCon was I just followed the uh, what what followed the dot at symbol here. So this is the name of the user of which we wish to extract the tweets from. So let me just minimize that. We've specified that it's PyCon. We'll also get just one tweet from this uh, user. So let's go ahead and write that and run it and see what we get. So let's see, what, what do we get here? So we get a lot of stuff. Let's just get some identifying information here. Uh, let's see, so is there a text field? So this is the text field. This is generally, uh, we'll, in, in actually the next video, what we'll do is we'll break down what uh, we're looking at here. There's a lot of information here in this tweet. Uh, it's not just the text of the tweet, it's the, you know, ID information, the user information, the retweet information, all this other stuff. So we'll break down precisely what is going on here. But there's a field in this mess, which is called text. And this is actually the text of the tweet. So it says all early bird registrations have been claimed, but it's still far from too late to register for PyCon US 2018. So let's verify that this tweet is actually on the timeline. So if we go here, uh, we see that this is the most recent tweet that we extracted. Indeed, all early bird registrations have been claimed, but it's too far from too late to register for PyCon US 2018. Cool. So we, are, we have successfully extracted a timeline tweet from another user. So I'm, I'm going to mention a couple other uh, functions which are related but different to the user timeline tweet. And they all kind of have a similar form. So I'm just going to, I guess, quickly write those down just so you can have access to them. You can play with them. Uh, the form of all of these functions is pretty much the same. So if you understand how this one works, the other ones that I'm going to write, which are just two other ones, should be pretty similar. So the other one that we can do is we can get uh, friend list. So this also will be a class method. We can also determine how many friends we get by a uh, parameter here that we'll set. So this 
Again, just like we did before, we're going to define an empty friend list, which will store all of the friends for a given user. In this case, I'm not going to specify the user just because um, I guess it's not really necessary to get the concept of how this thing works. So I'm going to define a loop for friend in cursor self.twitter client.friends. Uh, dot items num friends. So just to very briefly go over this, you should uh, see a similar type of idea on line 19 as you do on line 25. So we're looping over uh, Twitter client dot friends in this case, not dot user timeline, and then we're getting a certain number of friends of that user based on the argument that we pass into the function. And then what we're going to want to do as we loop through is we can say friend list dot append friend and then we can just return the friend list. So similar concept to what we saw above, just to hammer that pattern uh, or, or, or to give you another instance of that pattern uh, that we saw here. We can also get the, uh, let's call it get timeline. Uh, let's see, let's, uh, we can get home timeline. Let's call it that, get home timeline tweets. So these are, uh, you know, you have your own tweets that you've tweeted out yourself. The home line, or the home line, oh my goodness, the home timeline tweets, those are the ones that if you go to your Twitter page on the home page, you will see all the people that you follow and everything like that. So the top tweet there and, and following, you know, from there are the home timeline tweets. And that's, we can also extract those for a given user as well. So the pattern there is similar uh, as well. So we'll say self num tweets like that uh, we'll say let's say home timeline uh, tweets is the list that we'll store them in for tweets in cursor self dot twitter client so this should look pretty familiar and we'll say dot uh, we'll say home oops client dot home timeline tweets or just home timeline uh, dot items and then we'll pass in the number of tweets we wish to get from our home timeline or uh, any users home timeline that we happen to specify and then we'll say home timeline tweets dot append tweet and then we'll return that as well so these functions all kind of have a similar flavor to them in the way that they work this get user timeline uh, sorry about that this get user timeline here also allows us to um, specify the ID of the user. And actually we can very quickly do that here as well, just by saying ID is equal to self.twitter user. And we can also add that onto this one as well. So ID is equal to self.twitter Twitter user. So if you want more information about uh, these API calls, uh, I will also link in the description to this API reference page, which is associated with the uh, Tweepy documentation. So if you want more information on some of these other things that we maybe didn't have so much time to go into, so you can see there's the home timeline function. There's also other parameters that you might be interested in. Instead of getting the number of tweets, perhaps you want to get a certain number of pages from a user or from your own timeline. Um, there's also some other ones. So we saw user timeline. Uh, you can get retweets of me, statuses, update statuses. You can update your status via the Tweepy API if you wish to do so. Destroy status. I mean, there's a ton of things here and I'm just going to kind of let your imagination go and leave you this page. And if you want to experiment with these things, this is very well documented and I suggest that you do that. We're going to be analyzing some tweets. Well, we're going to really set up the infrastructure first so we can take some tweets and then analyze them using pandas and numpy. So in order for us to proceed with the remaining part of this video, both of those modules need to be installed. So I'm just going to go ahead and open up a separate tab here. And if you don't already have numpy and pandas installed, then you'll need to run the following command in the terminal. Let me just make this a little bit bigger. So if you run pip install pandas. This is going to essentially give us the content that will allow us to store the tweets and the uh, corresponding things that we extract from those tweets into something called a data frame. And this will allow us to uh, pass this around, maybe make a graph out of it. So you'll need this in order uh, to store the content into these data frames. The other thing that we'll need is also NumPy. NumPy is just a general purpose um, numerical library for Python that does a lot of things 
we'll only be using it for very small, uh, you know, 0.001% of its functionality in this video, but you're going to need it nonetheless. So I'm going to say pip install numpy. So you'll notice, by the way, that I tried to install pandas. It said I already have it, which is fine. You might see the message as well if you already have pandas installed. I'm going to see a similar message here for numpy as well. It says that I already have it installed on my machine, so I'm good to go. So I'm going to close that out, and then I'm going to go back to the file that we've been working with. Um, and again, I, I will say this at the end of the video, but all of the code will be available on my GitHub. I'm just continuing on from part two of this series and uh, just working from that code. So uh, you can work along with me or you can download the completed code once it's been uploaded uh, with this video as well, whatever you prefer. So I'm going to go ahead and import both pandas and numpy. So I'm just going to say import numpy as np and then also import pandas as PD. So this is just a general convention. This will allow us to refer to anything from the NumPy library by just using the dot operator. So we can say nump dot the name of a function that's provided from NumPy. Similarly for pandas, anytime we want to access a function from pandas, we can just say, uh, and I should say as here, as PD. So we can just say PD dot the name of a function that comes from the module pandas. And that should do it. So the next thing that I want to do is I want to add a function in this Twitter client class that's going to allow us to essentially just get directly this Twitter client API so we can interface with this API and we can uh, essentially extract data from the tweets that we get. So I'm going to create another function in this Twitter client class. Let's just go ahead and call it get Twitter client API. It's going to take self since it's a member of this class. And then really all I'm going to do is I'm just going to return the variable that we defined up here. So I'm just going to say return self.twitterclient and that's it. So that's the only thing I want to add in this class. Let's go down to the bottom of the file. So at the bottom of the file we have this, this content from previous videos. I'm just going to go ahead and remove all of the stuff within the main portion of this file. And I'm going to create another class which is going to be responsible for analyzing the tweets that we extract from Twitter. So I'm going to call this class, let's call it, um, let's call it Tweet Analyzer. So we'll say Tweet Analyzer. And this is just going to be a class. We'll go ahead and put in a comment here to briefly describe what this class is supposed to be doing. Let's say functionality for analyzing and categorizing content from tweets, something like that. Okay, so that's a brief description of that class. So we'll eventually go ahead and fill this in. Let me go down to the main portion of the file here and let's just go ahead and create a Twitter client and then use that function that we created before to allow us to get the API so we can interface with that because that's what we're going to be using to get the tweets before we analyze them. So I'm going to say Twitter client, which is a variable. I'm going to be defining that equal to the Twitter client class. And then I'm just going to go ahead and call the function that we just created. Uh, I'm going to say API is equal to Twitter client dot get Twitter client API, which is what we called it. So now API is a variable that has the Twitter client object that we created in that class. So now what I want to do is I also want to uh, start streaming some tweets. So let's go ahead and define a variable that we'll just call tweets. And this is going to be uh, something that we can obtain from the client that we just created there. So I'm going to say API dot user underscore timeline. So user timeline is a function that is provided from the Twitter client API. So it's not a function that we've written. This user timeline is not a function that we've written. It's a function from the Twitter client. So just to be clear on that. So this function will allow us to specify a number of things. Uh, one thing we can specify is the user that we want to extract tweets from. And another thing that we can also specify in this function is how many tweets we want to extract from that user. So I guess just for the sake of example, let's go ahead and say that the screen name, which is how we specify the user, is equal to some Twitter user. In this case, I'm going to be using Donald Trump as an example because uh, I, I guess he's you know someone that's well known on Twitter. So real Donald Trump is his Twitter handle. So I'm just going to use that as the variable screen name that we're passing into this function that's again given to us by the uh, Twitter client API. And then we can also specify how many tweets we want to extract from his page by saying count, which is a variable. Again, you can consult the documentation for what the variables should be called in these functions. You can't just call screen name anything. You can't just call count anything. These are variables that are specified from the documentation that we can hard code values to. And that's what we're doing now as we call this function. So count will specify how many tweets we want to grab from, in this case, real Donald Trump. Let's just say 20. 
And then what we can do is we can let's just go ahead and just make sure this works and say print tweets. So with any luck, what this is going to do is it's going to go to the real Donald Trump, stream the most recent 20 tweets, and then we'll print that content out on the screen. So I'm just going to clear the terminal. I'm going to say Python. This is called analyzing Twitter data, which is the file that we're in. And I'm just going to write that. So we see here that we've got... Um, so I actually had to restart that because I believe I was streaming or I was running a file from another directory with the same name, so that was my fault. So again, just going back to clearing the terminal and then running this file, which is in the directory that we're in. We run this, we get this content here, which we can see is coming from Donald Trump's um, Twitter page. So you can see that there's a few key indicators here from just the text, see Donald J. Trump. Um, so there's a couple of, uh, basically this is just one big tweet, which has a number of, features for a tweet which are specified in, in the json format and we can extract parts of that if we want to analyze whatever part that we might be interested in so in this video what we're going to be doing is just kind of honing in on a few key aspects of uh, what content we can extract from a single tweet and then just putting that into a data frame so we've got this tweet we know that it works we're streaming tweets from donald trump's twitter page and now what we can do is we can go ahead and create a data frame which is going to store that content and just going to uh, allow us to neatly organize that and also to process it for further data analysis later. So we're going to make use of this tweet analyzer class which we've created up here and also the NumPy and Pandas modules that we imported. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to create a function in this tweet analyzer class. Let's call it tweets to data frame. So it's just going to take the tweets that we've gotten here which is just this big JSON string and then convert it um, to a uh, data frame. So in this, it'll take self, it's a member of the class, and it will also take the tweets that we want to convert to a data frame. So what I'm going to do here is I'm, I'm going to create the data frame object, and I'm going to say df, which is going to be the data frame, is equal to um, p, pd dot data frame. So this uh, is a function that's provided to us from pandas. This will allow us to uh, create a data frame based on some content that we feed it. And then what we can do is we can specify the data that we want to make the data frame out of. So we can say data is equal to, and what we're going to want to do in this is give it a list. And this list is going to be created from the tweets that we feed in to this function. So I'm going to say this is equal to the text of the tweet, which we can extract by um, essentially saying tweet.text for this tweet that we're going to do. I'm just going to write out the loop and then I'm going to explain what precisely this loop does uh, for tweet in tweets. So just to kind of unpack what's going on here, we've specified this variable that we're feeding into the data frame function, and we're creating a list, and we're looping through every single tweet in this tweets thing that we're feeding in here. And basically what we're doing is that we want to extract the text from each of those tweets. So we're creating a list where each object in that list is the text of each of the tweets. So that's what this data list is corresponding to. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna specify the column for which to, to specify where these are going to live in the data frame. So I'm just going to give the column a name. So columns is equal to, let's say, tweets, just to specify kind of what we're storing in this column. And then I'm just going to go ahead and return the data frame that we've created here. So down here, we have our tweets. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and say uh, data frame is equal to well, I guess before we do that, we need to create a, a, a tweet analyzer object for the class that we've created. So let's call it tweet analyzer. Let's have this be equal to the tweet analyzer class. So it's, we're creating an object of this class. And then we can go ahead and say, now that we've specified that, data frame is equal to tweet analyzer dot tweets to data frame. And then we'll feed in the tweets that we've got from this line up here. So we've gotten our tweets from using the client API. And then what we're doing here is we're creating a data frame object, which again is being returned from this function. And then we're setting that equal to uh, what this function is doing, which is essentially taking the tweets that we've gotten, converting that into a data frame, and then storing that data frame in DF here. So just to see what we've got, we can go ahead and say print uh, df.head. And this is just going to print out the first couple elements, in this case, the first 10 elements of the data frame that we've created. So I'm going to write that, I'm going to clear the terminal, and then I'm going to say Python analyzing Twitter data. If we do this, we get very nicely formatted information here. So each of these are the first 10 objects of this data frame that we've created. And you can see the tweet text of each of these is stored uh, under this heading tweets. So that's kind of cool. So we can also extract other 
pieces of information from each of the tweets. So let's actually just I'm going to comment um, I'm going to comment this out for now. And what we can do is we can figure out what other attributes of these tweets we can actually extract data from. So if I say print dir of tweets of zero, what I'm essentially doing is I'm printing out the, the essentially the information that we can extract from just the first tweet. So this is going to show us what types of pieces of information we can, we can extract from every tweet. I'm just confining my, my space to just looking at the first tweet and seeing what objects we can extract from this tweet uh, happen to be. So I'm going to go ahead and write that and run this thing. So if we run this, we see all of the, it's essentially a list of all of the possible things that we can ask of this tweet. We can ask the user, we can ask the text, which we saw, we can ask um, how many retweets there are, we can ask the how many likes there are, favorite count, so we can ask where this tweet actually came from, the ID, a whole bunch of things. And so what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to figure out how to extract this information from each individual tweet put that information into our data frame and then kind of build on this. So not only do we have the text for each of the tweets, but we've also got maybe the ID, the like count, things like that. So that's what we want to do. So I'm just going to go ahead and comment this out. That's just supposed to kind of illustrate what things we can extract. So now what we can do is we can also kind of be a little bit more granular. I guess for another sake of example, let me print out tweets of zero dot ID. So the way that we access, let's say the ID of tweet zero in this list that we've extracted, we can just use the dot ID um, method here to allow us to extract what the ID of that particular tweet is. So I'm going to write that, run this here, and we see that if we run this, this is the ID that corresponds to the tweet that we've, we've gotten there. We can also say, let's just say uh, retweet count, which is another one of the things that we can ask about this tweet. If we run that, we can get how many, uh, let's see, so maybe it's not uh, spelled correctly here. Let me just make sure that I spell that. Try that again. So this is going to give us how many times this particular tweet, tweet zero on that list, was retweeted. Uh, it's a total of 5,394 times. So that's just some information about how we can extract this content. And there's, of course, many different possibilities for the type of directions that you go with this information. So let's just go back up to our function here and then kind of build on this data frame to allow us to continually add to it so we can kind of uh, get, get all of this information in a more helpful context for us to process it. So let's go ahead and say that we want to, in addition to storing the text of the tweet, let's say that we also want to store the ID. So we can say df ID. So we're essentially creating a column in our data frame with the heading ID. And we can set this equal to uh, something. So we're going to essentially feed it in a NumPy array, which is going to be um, essentially a list of the content that we're after for each of the tweets. So in this case, we're interested in the ID of each of the tweets. So we're going to want to loop through every single one of the tweets in the tweets that we're given and then extract the ID from that. So I'm going to say np.array. So this is just an, a, a NumPy array object that we're creating here. And this is basically what the data frame, uh, we're creating a data frame column based on this array. And what we're converting to an array is a list. So the list that we're going to be feeding into this is similar to what we saw above. So we can say tweet.id. So that's, again, how we extracted the ID for a specific tweet, as we saw down here below, we wanted to extract the retweet count or the ID. We did tweet zero or whatever ID that corresponds to in our list of tweets, dot ID, dot retweet count, dot whatever we happen to be interested in. So we're doing the ID here. So what we're doing is we want to extract that information uh, kind of in a similar format to what we saw up, up here. So for tweet in tweets. So again, what we're doing is we, we take the tweets that we've gotten in from this function, we're looping through each, every, every single one of those in that list, and then we're saying, give me the ID of that particular tweet, store it in an array, convert that array to a NumPy array, and then create a column in this data frame with the heading ID based on every single one of those, right? There's a lot going on in that one line. So now that we have that, let's just go ahead and make sure that we... Um, have the data frame update appropriately. So I'm going to uncomment this line down here that creates the data frame based on our function that we have as part of our class. And then let's just go ahead and write the uh, thing that we had before, which was print df.head. And let's just see what the first 10 elements look like. So we'll write that and then we'll give this a run. So if we run this, we see that not only do we have our tweets 
for each of the columns here, uh, but we or for each of the rows here rather, we also have the ID as well. So the corresponding ID for this tweet is stored right here, corresponding ID for this tweet here, right there, so on and so forth. So basically we're just going to keep extracting some information that might be useful and it's going to have a very similar pattern to uh, this line. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy this line a couple times and we're going to see what other information we can extract. And again, if you want to see any of the other types of pieces of information that you can extract from a given tweet, you can just uncomment this to see what those attributes are. So we're just going to go through this and, and kind of show some other examples. So let's say I want to figure out what the length of a tweet is. So I want to figure out how, how long a given tweet is for one reason or another. So what I can do is same format. I want to loop through all the tweets in the tweets that we've been given in this function. But instead of the ID, I want to analyze the text. And specifically, I want to analyze the length of that text, right? So I'm going through each of the tweets and I'm saying, figure out what each of the length of the tweets are. Sorry, I keep undoing something here. Let me just put this here. Right, okay, so there. So I'm, I'm extracting the length of each of the tweets as we loop through them, and I'm storing that in this list, converting it to a NumPy array, and then creating a column called len, which is going to store that information. So maybe another attribute that we, we care about is the date that the tweet was posted. So same sort of concept here. The way that we can extract that information, again, which we can figure out by uncommenting this line here and seeing what uh, the attributes are. You can also consult the documentation, by the way, to see if it's not clear based on the name as to what those things correspond to. You can see what um, a more elaborate definition of each of those attributes in the documentation. So if you're not sure, you can consult that. So for us to... To get the date here, we can say created.created at. So this is going to give us the date that that particular tweet was created at. Same process there. Let's say that we also want to do the source. So this is going to allow us to determine where the tweet is coming from. Was it from an iPhone? Was it from an Android? Was it from a desktop PC? And the way that we can get that information is by saying uh, .source. Let's say we also want to do the number of likes. So in that case, what we're going to be doing is doing the uh, favorite count, favorite underscore count. And then let's do one more. Let's say that we also want to figure out how many retweets there were for a given tweet. Uh, so what we can do there is instead of favorite count, as we saw down below, we can just do retweet count. So now we've got all of these new columns in our data frame that we've created here, and they're being added to the data frame that we're returning uh, here. And then when we create the data frame object here from the tweets that we're given, we should be able to see a whole bunch of new columns that we've created from this function. Let's just go ahead and write that, I'll clear the terminal, and then let's just make sure that we see all of that information. So I'll run this here, and it looks like that worked. So we have the text of each of the tweets, the corresponding IDs, the length, so the number of characters in each of the tweets, the date on which the tweets were posted, uh, where it's coming from, so Donald Trump likes to post from uh, an iPhone, how many likes each of the tweets got, so this one got a particularly uh, look, the most likes out of any of these most recent tweets, and then how many retweets uh, each of these got as well. So that's just kind of a, a bird's eye view of the type of information that you can extract from each of these tweets. Of course, the possibilities are, are somewhat limitless in terms of what you can take away from that, in terms of what you can actually, uh, what insights you can derive from that. So this is just kind of setting up the scaffolding and we'll continue to work with the scaffolding that we're setting up here and continue to tweak at it and uh, see, what we can, see what we can do. So we created a data frame with the ID, length of a tweet, the date that that tweet was created, uh, where that tweet came from, like an iPhone, how many likes that got, retweets, so on. So we've kind of got this data frame now of every single tweet that we can get from some user for some amount of tweets. And we can now take this data and try to visualize it in some way. We're going to be doing some very simple time series graphs based on the data that we've already stored and created in this data frame. So one thing I guess I first want to do just for consistency's sake is just change this to a lowercase t. doesn't really make any difference. You can keep it uppercase, but I guess I just uh, a bit pedantic. So I just want to make sure that everything's consistent. Okay, so now that we've got all of this, let's go down here. I'm going to get rid of these commented lines. We've got our data frame being created. I'm also going to get rid of this um, showing the head of the data frame since we already know what that looks like. 
So let's just, before we actually get to plotting, let's just see what we can do from the data frame that we have so far to see what types of insights we can derive with without even actually graphing anything. So for instance, th there's a number of things you can do here. There's you know countless things that you can analyze. Uh, we'll just go over a couple of them and then from there we'll, we'll, we'll look at how we can plot some things. And again, that's also relatively endless as well. So this is by no means um, extensive. This is just kind of dipping your toes into the water of what you can extract from this type of data. So one thing we can get from our data frame that we've already got is let's just say that we want to um, maybe within the data frame we have we want to figure out what is the average length of all of the tweets that we have in our data frame. So we, we here collect 20 tweets and we want to figure out okay what is the average length of all of those 20 tweets and of course we can change this count from 20 to 200 or 400 or whatever we care about. So let's just write in a comment here which is get average length over all tweets. And now that we've stored everything in this data frame, it's gonna make it really easy for us to just manipulate the data that's already present in that data frame and then just get this answer. And the way that we can do that is by manipulating the mean function in NumPy, which is just going to be something that we're gonna run on a list in the data frame. So let me show you what I mean by that. I'm just going to print out the result that comes from running the mean function. So I'm going to say mpy or mp.mean. There's a little bit of a lag here since sometimes the autocomplete can be annoying in Vim. Uh, so anyway, I'm calling the mean function. And what am I calling the mean function on? I want to figure out the mean of the length of the tweets. So I'm saying df length. So basically what I'm doing there is df length is going to return a list. It's going to return a list of all of the lengths of all of the 20 tweets in this case. And then we're going to be running the uh, mean function which is provided to us from NumPy on that list. And then we're going to get a single number which we're printing out to the screen. So that's what is going on in this line. I'm just going to go ahead and write that, clear the terminal, and then we can go ahead and say Python. This is called visualizing Twitter data pi. And we get here that the average length is 122.2 characters per um, per tweet in this in this size. So we can of course increase that to let's say like maybe I don't know 200 tweets. Let's see how that changes when we get a larger sample of data. So it actually doesn't change terribly much, and it's only gone up by a little bit. So it's kind of interesting. So I'm gonna bring that that back down to 20. Another thing we can ask is let's say we want to figure out what is the tweet that received the most likes in the sample that we've gotten. So we can say get the number of likes for the most liked tweet. So what is uh, what is the tweet that received the most like, or specifically, how many likes did the most liked tweet get? So we can also do something pretty similar here. I'm just gonna copy this line, put it here, and instead of taking the mean over a list, what I wanna do is take the max, because what we wanna do is we wanna figure out the maximum number of likes that is from the uh, likes column in our data frame. So the likes column stored all of the number of likes for every given tweet. I'm taking the max of that list using the numpy max function and then I'm printing that out to the screen. So again we can write that, save it, run it, see what we get. So the maximum number of likes it looks like over those 20 tweets was something like 121,862. So I, again maybe I'm just curious. I want to see how this scales if we increase the number of tweets from 20 to 200. Um, and it looks like it's gone up by a factor of two uh, from 121,000 to 332,000. So that's interesting. Uh, one more. So let's say that we want to do a very similar thing or instead of getting the number of likes, we want to get the number of retweets. So get the number of, uh, let's say, retweets for the most, let's say, retweeted retweeted tweet. And so that would be the same exact syntax. The only thing that I'm changing here is the operation on which I'm performing the max function on. So instead of performing it on likes, I'm going to be performing it on the retweets column of the data frame and then printing that out to the screen. So let's go ahead and write that and then run it, see what we get. So the maximum number of retweets is 107,000. Uh, so that's interesting as well. So of course, these are just printing out the numbers to the screen. It's very minimal in terms of what we're actually doing with the data. There's endless possibilities for what you can actually do and extract from these sorts of um, insights that we're deriving from this data. So, all right, so now let's move on to plotting some time series data. And I'm just going to put in a comment here to distinguish what we're going to do from what we previously did, time series. 
And let's say hypothetically that what we want to do is we want to create a time series plot that's going to show us the number of, let's say, likes that Donald Trump received on any given day over the course of some days, which we can extract from, you know, some given count here. So we extract, let's say, 200 tweets. Maybe that's over you know, ranged over some number of days. And then for every one of those days, Donald Trump got a certain number of likes. We want to plot that number of likes that he got on a given day, and then just plot that for every given day over this time series of, of dates. Okay, so that's the general idea of what we want to show. So let's create a variable which we'll call time likes. This is going to be equal to a pandas series object. So we're essentially creating a series object so we can eventually plot this as a time series. So I'm going to say this is equal to PD series, and then uh, this takes two things, the data. So there's a data frame that we want to feed it, um, which is going to be dot values. So this is PD uh, data frame of likes. So we want to actually get in the number of likes there. That should be in quotes, likes. So we're getting the values of, the, of each of the likes. So every uh, day there's going to be a certain number of likes that are given and we're extracting the values from that. And then, oops, and then what we also want to receive in this time series function is the index. And the index is essentially the x-axis. So what we're plotting um, and then for each what we want to do is for each day show the number of likes. So the number of likes is kind of the y-axis. The date is the time series itself, the number of days. So we're going to set the index is equal to the data frame of the date, which is something that we've already extracted from, uh, from before from our data frame. So this is our time series object that we've created from pandas. And now that's ready for us to actually just go ahead and plot that. So what we can do is we can say time underscore likes dot plot. And what we can do is we can we can feed this a few arguments. Um, I'm going to be feeding this plot function two arguments, basically just the size of the figure, which specifies how big this graph is going to be, um, and then also let's say the color. So this is going to be the color of the line that's plotted throughout the days for every uh, given day. So I'm going to say fig size is equal to uh, I'm just going to say 16 comma four. That's just the x y axis of the image that we're going to see, and then also the uh, color which we can put as red so the function takes in a string in this case it's just a single character that corresponds to a given color and you can consult the uh, documentation for what other parameters this this can take and what valid arguments these parameters can take as well so I'm just kind of hard coding those two um, and you can leave those blank if you want to it's not necessary to put them in there but sometimes you might want to tweak the graphs in some specific way so then what we do once we've kind of created our data that we're going to plot and once we've created our plot that we're going to show, we actually need to show the plot. So we're going to say plt.show. Now this plt is something that we need to actually import from matplotlib, which is going to allow us to uh, show the plots that we've created. So I'm going to go up to the top of my file and I'm going to make sure that I have uh, matplotlib uh, imported. So I'm going to say for import, or I'm going to say, let's say... Um, from matplot, actually, no, what I'll do is import, sorry about that, matplotlib.pyplot as plt. So basically, I'm importing this library, specifically matplotlib.pyplot, and I'm importing it as uh, plt. So this will hopefully show up eventually. Sometimes the autocomplete in Vim can take a little while and can lag behind a little bit. There we go. So anyway, so I'm importing the matplotlib library specifically from that. I'm importing pyplot and then I'm going to refer to that as plt as a shorthand similar to what we did for numpy and for pandas. So I should also say that you should have matplotlib installed and if you don't have it installed, you can just open up a new terminal, just make this a little bit bigger and you can just run pip install matplotlib and this should install everything that you need. I believe this comes with NumPy already, so you might already have it installed if you have NumPy installed. If you don't, if you want to be sure, you can run the command that I just ran, which is installing matplotlib. You'll see that I already have this requirement satisfied, so I, I'm, I'm good to go. You might already see that as well. If you don't, then it will install on your machine, and then you should be uh, good to go. So I'm just going to close that, go back to our code here, go back to the bottom of the file, which is where we were previously writing code, and then go from there. So again, just to review, we've created a time series object using pandas. We've created a plot with some specifications, and then we're showing that plot using the matplotlib.pyplot module. So let's write this 
I'll clear the terminal and then I'm just going to say Python visualizing Twitter data. That's going to pop up a window or should pop up a window. It doesn't know what data is. Uh, I think the reason for that is this is not um, this is not correct. It's not data. It's date, right? So we want the y, the x-axis to be the uh, dates. So that was my mistake there. Write that again. Try it again. So we're going to write this. And now what we have here is a sequence of dates along the x-axis, the number of likes on the y-axis, and we can see kind of how the number of likes changes over the course of a given set of dates. So from however long ago we were able to extract 200 tweet from all the way to the present day of this recording. And then there's, you know, maybe a few interesting things that you can see from this graph. There's a big spike right here, number of likes. So it might be interesting to drill down as to why that is. Uh, this, whatever tweet this was got, you know, just head and shoulders above every other tweet here. So that's, that might be kind of interesting to uh, examine further. So I'm just going to close that and then go back to our code. So that's a time series for the number of likes, but we can also do time series for other things. So it, it really, we can just kind of modify this code very slightly to do, let's say the time series for uh, retweets. So maybe I'll take this, I'll paste this down here. And then instead of time likes, let's call this time retweets. Uh, let's also rename that. So that's also time retweets. And then the series object that we're going to create, we want to create not with likes, but with retweets. And the date is fine because we still want to see how the retweets, uh, the number of retweets changes over the course of a given set of days. This is fine. We're just creating the same plot and then we just show it. So let's just go ahead and see. I'm just going to comment this initial time series out here, the one that we're doing likes. I'm just going to comment that out so we don't get too many plots. Save that and then run it. So we should get a very similar looking plot where now we can see it kind of a similar type of um, graph. And this spike, you'll notice, also corresponds to the same spike probably where that huge, uh, that tweet that was liked a lot was also retweeted quite a bit too. So you can see the number of retweets here on the left side of the screen, the y-axis is much less than the number of likes. However, uh, the number of retweets is in some way correlated to the number of likes. So that's kind of interesting too. So this tweet, whatever Donald Trump tweeted at this time, seemed to have garnered a lot of likes and retweets. And it seems like the, the graph is somewhat consistent with the number of likes. And perhaps what we could do, just to kind of verify this um, hypothesis or to kind of not verify it, but to give a little bit more evidence that this hypothesis is probably true, is we can we can bunch the time series together onto one plot. So instead of plotting two separate time series where we have one for the number of likes and one for the number of retweets, one thing we can do is we can just put them on the same plot and see how they correlate. So let's just go ahead and do that. So I'm just going to comment this out. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy this. So I'm creating the time series likes just like we did before. I'm creating the plot. And I'm going to change the plot actually. Uh, instead of doing the color and the fig size, I'm actually going to change this to, well, I'll leave the fig size. Uh, I will get rid of the color. I'm going to add in a label because we're going to have two lines on this time series. One is going to be a, a label for the number of likes and one is going to be a label for the number of retweets. So for this one, this is likes. I'm going to uh, put this line as labeled as likes. And then I'm also going to put in a legend is equal to true. So this basically will put in a little box in the in the time series chart, which will show us what line corresponds to what label. And that's going to be kind of helpful because what, what's nice about uh, pandas and matplotlib is that if we plot multiple lines here, it will be smart enough to distinguish them by assigning them a different color. And then what we're doing here is we're essentially just labeling each of those lines from uh, whatever they represent. And then we're going to put in a legend, which is essentially going to correspond to this blue line is likes, this orange line is retweets. And it's going to make it easier for us to kind of visualize what's going on. So that will be a little bit more clear when you actually see the graph. Uh, I, I think describing it without seeing it is a little bit is, is a little bit difficult. So anyway, let me copy this right here. And instead of, actually, I'll just copy this right here, which is uh, corresponding to the retweets. So doing the same thing for the re retweets, I'm going to copy that uh, thing here, get rid of that. So all I'm doing here is I'm just making sure that the plot is formatted the same exact way as it is for the likes. I'm going to change the label here to retweets. So just to 
confirm what we've got. We've got our time likes, we've got our time retweets. Those are both the series objects from pandas that correspond to the time series data that we want to plot. We create a plot for the time, uh, sorry, for the likes. We create a plot for the retweets. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna have one single plot.show call, plt.show call. And then that is going to put the single plot up on the screen and we'll see both those lines put on there together. So I go ahead and write that and then let's just run this and see what we get. So we get the two plots up against each other. So we've got the dates again, just like before, and the number of uh, either retweets or likes on the y-axis. And you can see that right now we put legend is equal to true. That's giving us this little box here in the upper right corner of the plot. So likes is denoted by the blue line and then orange is denoted by the uh, uh, the retweets is denoted by the orange line. So what we what we can kind of see is that there is indeed some correlation between the uh, likes and retweets. So first of all, there's a lot more likes than retweets, but you can see certain spikes that arise in the likes also correspond to spikes that arise in the retweets as well. So that's very topical and prob probably something you could have arrived at without doing any sort of a, a plot analysis on it, but it's kind of interesting to see the data uh, being visualized like this. This is more just kind of an exercise in what you can do using this type of uh, data. We're going to analyze the sentiment of a given tweet. So we're going to determine whether or not the sentiment of a given tweet is overly positive, negative, or neutral. And for uh, this purpose, we're going to make use of a module called Text Blob. So this is something that we'll have to install if you don't already have it installed. This uh, particular module has a built-in sentiment analyzer that's already trained on uh, data. So we can just make use of the analyzer itself to apply to our tweets to determine whether or not they are positive or negative based on this on this Text Blob analyzer. So first and foremost, let's just open up another terminal and I'll make this a little bit bigger. What we'll need is this text blob thing. So let's just go ahead and make sure that we have that installed. pip install text blob. So if you do that, if you already have it installed, you'll see this requirement already satisfied. If you don't, then you'll see it install in your machine. Once you've got that, you should be good to go. So now that we have that installed, let me just close this. We will go ahead and import this. So let's go ahead and import this over here. I'll say from text blob import the class text blob. And another thing that we're also going to make use of in this video is a regular expression. And this will be made use of to clean the tweet, essentially to remove any extra characters or hyperlinks or things that are not necessarily indicative of the actual text content as, as part of the tweet. We want to remove all that because that's not necessarily going to help us in figuring out the sentiment of a given tweet. So let's go ahead and just import RE, which is the regular expression module in Python. And we've got everything uh, ready to go. So RE should also already be installed on your machine if you have Python. So you don't need to install that separately. You don't need to do a pip install or anything like that. So let's go to the bottom of the file. And I'm going to clean up some of these things. So I'm going to get rid of these plotting uh, lines here. So all of these were from the previous video. I'm just going to go ahead and delete that. I'm going to keep the data frame creation because we'll be making use of that. Specifically, we'll be adding another column which will have the sentiment analysis for each tweet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some functions here in the tweet analyzer class. Uh, the first function, which I'm just going to call it clean tweet, will make use of the regular expression library to clean the tweet and remove any hyperlinks or extra characters. So this is a member of the class. It's going to take self and then also the tweet to be cleaned. So what I'm actually going to do, since the regular expression is a little bit cumbersome and verbose and annoying to write out, I'm just going to paste it right in there. Uh, and this is from a file that I've already saved off to the side. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, of course, like I always do, have the code available on my GitHub. So instead of pausing the video and writing that whole terrible expression out, you can just download the code and copy it from there. So again, basically all that's really going on here, this looks a bit complicated, but it's just removing special characters from the string, from the tweet specifically, and then removing the hyperlinks and then returning the result of that clean tweet. So we have a function that does that, it's responsible for that. Now we want another function that's going to be responsible for calling text blob and using the sentiment analy analyzer provided from text blob and then returning the sentiment. So let's call this function analyze sentiment. This will be taking self and then also the tweet that we want to analyze the sentiment of. 
So we'll go ahead and create an object that will be returned to us from text blob. We'll call this object analysis and we'll set this equal to text blob and then what we're going to feed into this is essentially what we want to analyze the sentiment of, which in this case is the clean tweet. So we're going to say self.clean tweet, and then we're going to feed in that tweet that we get into this function, make sure that it's clean, pass in the clean tweet into this text blob thing, this class, and then this will allow us to leverage the sentiment analysis tools that text blob provides to us. So now what we're going to do is we're going to do just that. So we're going to say if analysis.sentiment dot polarity. So what we're doing here is analysis is the object created from text blob. There's a function of that called sentiment which will make use of the sentiment analysis engine and then there's a further function that's called polarity which is a property of that analysis which basically tells us whether or not the, the tweet in this case is positive or negative. So the polarity is a metric of whether or not that tweet is positive or negative in nature. So if this property, if this is greater than zero, we're going to return one. So this is to indicate that the polarity is positive. So it's a it's a positively uh, interpreted tweet. So we're going to return one in that case. So else if the sentiment, so analysis that sentiment that polarity, if this is equal to zero, then we essentially don't know whether or not it's positive or negative. So it's just going to be neutral. So if it's just a neutrally analyzed tweet, we're just going to return zero to denote that. So zero will be the case when the tweet is just a neutral tweet. And then otherwise, so otherwise uh, the case would be that the polarity is negative. And in that case, the sentiment analysis engine determined that the tweet is actually negative. So what we're going to do to denote that is return minus one. So that would be the way that we uh, make use of this function to let the user know that the tweet was analyzed to be negative. So we've done that. We've gone ahead and created the clean tweet and analyze sentiment functions. So now we're going to go ahead and make use of them. Let's go down to the main part of, the, of this file here. So what we're going to do, I'm just going to save this. What we're going to do is we're going to build on the data frame that we've created from the tweet, uh, the, what is it called? The tweet analyzer class. So we're going to build on that data frame. So we're going to add another column, which is going to be the sentiment analysis for each of the tweets that we have in this data frame. So what we're going to do is we're going to create, I'm actually just going to copy one of these lines up here and then add it after this one. So really what we're doing is we've created this data frame, which again is returned to us from this function as part of the tweet analyzer class. And then what I'm doing is I'm adding another column onto that data frame, which I'm going to call, let's call it sentiment. And this is going to have the 1, 0, or minus 1, depending on the sentiment analysis of that tweet. So what we're going to do, we're going to change one thing in here. Instead of saying the retweet count, we obviously don't want that. What we want in this case, let's see, I think I deleted too much there. So what we want in this case is we want to actually call our function. So we want to say tweet analyzer dot analyze sentiment. And then we're, we're going to pass in the tweet. So we're going to go ahead and pass in that tweet. And then we're going to be looping through each of the tweets in the tweets list that we have here. So basically, actually, I, it doesn't know what tweets is. So we need to specify what we're actually looping through. So instead of tweets, which is clear from the function up here. So tweets is defined here, but it's not defined down here in the main. So we want to specify that we're looping through the data frame that corresponds to the entry, or the column, that has the column tweets because again that is where we're storing each of these um, each of these each of the text that corresponds to each of the tweets. So just to kind of unpack what's going on here again, we're looping through each tweet in the data frame column corresponding to the heading tweets, which is again created up here and returned in this line here. And then what we're doing is we're doing a very similar thing, which should look familiar if you saw I think video three where we did uh, these things to kind of determine and create new columns corresponding to the ID, length, date, source, things like that. We're doing the same thing, only now the value that we're storing at that column for that given tweet is the sentiment analysis of that tweet. And the way that we're doing that is we're making use of that function that we created, which is analyze sentiment, which returns zero, one, or minus one. We're feeding in that tweet, it's gonna get cleaned, it's gonna get analyzed, and then we're going to have one of those three numbers. So we have our new column here, which is the sentiment analysis. So let's just go ahead and make sure that this works as expected. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just going to print out the first 10 entries in the data frame. So I'm gonna say print 
df.head, and then I'm just going to pass in 10, which is just letting Python know that we only want to see the first 10 entries in this data frame. So I'm going to write that, I'm going to clear the terminal, and then I'm going to say Python, and the name of this file is sentiment analysis Twitter data.py. So if we do that, it'll get the tweets, and then we see we have our data frame here, we've got our familiar columns, and then we also have the sentiment. So we have minus one for this first tweet, it looks like uh, that definitely could be phrases controversial. Minus one, it looks like there's not enough of that tweet is showing there for me to determine whether or not it's really uh, controversial or not. Third one is neutral, congratulations. Argue maybe that's positive. The next congratulations tweet here, that's positive, so that makes sense. Uh, thank you, thank you is interpreted to be positive. Next one is neutral, but Ivanka, and the remaining uh, tweets are positive. So from this very cursory glance, Donald Trump seems like a very positive guy. So yeah, so there's that. So anyway, um, that's pretty much it for this video. If you have any questions or comments or anything like that, then don't hesitate to leave them in the comment section below. As I mentioned before, all of the code for this will be available on the GitHub and I'll have a link to that in the description. You can just download that there. So thanks again for watching and have a great day.